Will you please welcome the lovely Joanna Page? <laughs> <laughs> We were doing this show in Smellovision because uh, the you smell like a fresh cantaloupe. Do I really? What are you wearing? What kind of perfume to give this melony smell? Well, I'm just wearing just um, I'm wearing June perfume. June? I've never heard of it before, but it has a melony note. And I've got um, a whole can of Elnet on my hair. Maybe so it's that. Maybe like a wasp. I'm attracted by the hairspray. <laughs> yes. Uh, how lovely to have you here. I, I can't believe that you're not actually Welsh. This is good because in the in Gavin and Gavin and Stacey, she sounds so Welsh, but you actually you're from South London, is that right? Yes, I am actually, but I like to stay in character, so um, so I'm still doing it now because yeah. I'm going to be talking about. She does the, the Welsh. She never drops the Welsh. It's incredible. Never, never. One would think you were from there, <laughs> uh, but you are, of course, from Wales. Yes, yeah, from Swansea. Uh, how is Wales? Oh, it's gorgeous. I love it. I'm obviously very picky. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I've been there, I've loved it. I, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful country, I think. It's a beautiful part of the world. And they must be very proud of you because you're from, from the... And well, we've heard of this place before, from Mumbles, I Yes, believe. I'm from the Mumbles. From the Mumbles. Is it yes. called the Mumbles, then? It, it is actually called the Mumbles. The Mumbles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the Mumbles is where Catherine Zeta-Jones comes yeah, from, is that right? Yeah, Catherine Zeta-Jones. She was just down the road. Uh, now, uh, so when you left uh, uh, the Mumble yeah. to, to become an actress, where did you come? You, you moved to a bigger Welsh town or you came to London? What did you I do? I came to London. I was 18 and... And, um, and I went to RADA, so I lived on Gower Street in Halls of Residence next door to it and didn't realise how good that was. And I used, to, I used to come out of the Halls of Residence and get the tube at Good Street to Covent Garden because I didn't realise how easy it was just to walk it's there. A, it's, about, it's about a four-and-a-half-minute yeah, walk, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It it is. You're not going to walk and get the tube there and walk it, yeah, from there. It yeah, it yeah. was. It uh, was. But it must have been pretty exciting and I imagine probably a little intimidating to come to London from the mumbles. Well, I was excited because I did read Kenneth Branagh's autobiography <laughs> and I thought that that's what it was going to be. <laughs> like it's not at all <laughs> so how was right a few then oh it was terrifying yeah. um i was just really scared i remember the night before going to london my mother locked herself in the bathroom and was just crying we were like oh where's mum gone and then we saw her in the bathroom just sobbing and then it must have been awful for my parents because i just phoned home every single night sobbing and crying okay so your mum was sobbing when you left you're funny yeah. something your poor father he's, <laughs> no. these, he's got these crying well, women my in dad his my dad he um when he used to come up to London and it would be the summertime and, and so we'd be all in sandals and you know summer clothes and stuff and dad would be in his winter trousers and winter shoes <laughs> and we'd be like dad what are you doing why don't you put some sandals on you're going to be boiling and he said no no we're walking around the streets of London I need to keep my shoes on just in case I need to take one off and fight someone with to protect <laughs> you and your mother <laughs> <laughs> so he so that well that's very noble of him but he was expecting that there were like yeah. pouncing men oh yeah to... he thought that we were going to get attacked well my uncle Anthony came round just before I went to, to um to Rada and it was like, like the scene in Gavin and Stacey, he came round and said, you go into London, so we think you ought to have a rape alarm, so got it for you. You should be wearing it round your neck. Well, I, uh, I, I admire the, the thought that's gone into it, but, uh, but obviously yeah. they had the wrong idea of London. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. not, nowhere near as dangerous as they're making it. No, 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 not but, at all. But you can understand why they would feel that way, and it's oh, so sweet. Yes. Yes. But why were you so upset being here? Because to come to Wada must have been a dream. In, oh, in... it was. It was amazing. But everybody was so much older. I was so young. And also, after living in Swansea, I didn't have much life experience. I'd never been in love. I'd never tested myself. I'd never done all, you know, these amazing things. I, you know, I was an only child and I just liked you know, going up for walks with the dog and being at home and stuff, and then suddenly being in London, and you've got to do these improvisations where you've just lost a baby or you're falling in love, and everybody just seems so old and so sophisticated. So when you had to pretend that as an actress you lost a baby and all you really had to call upon was either your uncle coming round <laughs> <laughs> with, with a rape alarm or, or losing a dog, maybe, well, what did you do? how did you dig deep and find that experience? I had to dig deep and I would think about my dog. That's all I think about. <laughs> Like the Spaniel, the family dog, not my dog that I've got now, which is like a child. But I would have to use the dog or just think about my parents. Uh, <laughs> are you enjoying this period of... Uh, fame is perhaps the wrong word, but success that comes yeah, with... The, yeah. You know, you are famous, but, you know, it's a success that you've earned. Uh, do you get people... Do they comment on the show? Do they shout things at you when they see you? Well, yeah, it's really weird, cos everybody always says, you know, oh, you're lush, or they always want you to say lush, and or, I think you're lush, and, and then it's weird when you're in the streets and people just shout, oh, what's occurring? And you just think, <laughs> oh, my God, oh, my God, that's... So strange. You'll be in the, in the street and just like a load of men will go, all right, Stace. 
And but, he just, you want to sort of turn around and be a bit sort of like, go right, boys, and be a bit sort of <laughs> rough to, to sort of impress them a bit. And then you'd have to think, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you must enjoy making the show. What a great bunch of people to work with. I've oh, met, so I've met many of the people who work on that show. Yeah. Uh, Rob Bryden is someone who always just cracks me up. Is he funny when you work with him? Oh, Does my he... God, he's brilliant. I'm just so lucky to have done a job where I get to work with so many people, like Julia Davis, Alison Steadman, Rob Bryden. You know, people that I've admired for years, and then I get to work with them and then all at the same time and they're just all so lovely but Rob you can't sort of spend a day with him without him doing impressions it's Tom Jones Sylvester Stallone yeah. and 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 then you sort of I've never met Sylvester Stallone but I met Tom Jones <laughs> and when I was talking to him I couldn't I couldn't talk to Tom Jones without first of all thinking of Rob Brydon doing Tom Jones and then it's Tom Jones yeah. it's just weird isn't it because Rob Brydon is a huh, he yeah, does that big like, yeah. Uh, but of course, you, you sung with Tom. You guys all got together and did it for Comic Relief. You did the... that, was, that has got to be one of the best times of my life. Yeah, yeah. When I remember Ruth and Rob said to us, a few of the cast are doing back in vocals on Comic Relief. Will you do it? And I just said, I can't believe you've even thought that I wouldn't. Of course I will. <laughs> Turned up, and I'm so excited because I was in a little denim skirt and cowboy boots, going to the top of the pop studios. Yeah, yeah. And the sign is up, and you just think, oh my God, I can't believe that I'm here. And we went and Flo Rida were rehearsing and there were all these women in like little hot pants and you know really going for it and um, <laughs> and they were singing and Rob Bryden was there leading on an amp in his uh, denim jeans and cowboy boots and a check shirt leading on the amp like that just really you know as if he's 18 or something <laughs> listening and then he turned around to inform me yeah you know that song is about oral sex do you know that <laughs> I didn't know that but, uh, but that, and then Tom turned up and I've got to be honest that man Oh. He's got so much charisma. Yeah. He's just amazing. It's, it's like someone's just poured liquid testosterone in a pair of trousers. It is! And then forgot to say stop. <laughs> it's overflowing out of him. Alison Steadman, right, told me that she met him once and I think they were doing an interview or something, but they met in, in the corridor, you know, backstage. And she said he came out of the room and somebody introduced him. She went, oh, hello, Tom, nice to meet you. And he went, hello, love, nice to meet you too. And with that, he went, I'm sorry, I've just burst my fly. I'm going to oh. have to go and change my trousers. <laughs> and she said that's the only time uh, she's met him. That old chestnut, eh, Tom? <laughs> I'm sorry, darling, you made me burst my flies. <laughs> Um, Gavin and Stacey, uh, the final series, I believe. Yes. Right? You're, you're doing, you film one more, you're just about to film this No, one? we finished about, uh, about two months ago. And this is it for Gavin and Stacey? It's all done, done and dusted. But you're not going to do any more? No, nothing not? at all. Well, unless we're all out to work in a couple of years' time and then hopefully <laughs> they'll do a special or something. But, but who decided? Who decided? What, the, the, this well, was think, Ruth um, and James? Yeah, I think Ruth and James just said, you know, let's go out on a high and let's just finish it there. And I think it's right because I really enjoyed filming the last series and I think I think I enjoyed it and I think it's good. And it's sad and it's funny and you know, I think all of our different stories are great. But I oh it was so sad when it finished I because can imagine. it was awful. All the other ones that we did, you sort of knew that we were gonna do something else. Yeah. So you'd be sad saying goodbye, but then you knew that, you know, we will see each other again. But it was it was traumatic when it finished. Did you drag it out? Well we'll have a, we'll go out for a meal and maybe we'll see each other tomorrow and then or was it a kind of abrupt, let's go, let's walk. Don't well it back. was it was quite abrupt because on my last day, filming my last scene with Ruth, well we we got in, in the morning and we couldn't look at each other. We've grown so close and she's like a sister to me. And every time I looked at her, we'd be like, Don't look at me, just just leave me alone, don't speak to me. Yeah. And then we did the last scene and then we sat in the catering truck together and she went that's it that's the last line the last line I'm ever going to say to you and I was just like just don't speak to me don't speak to me and she said I'm sorry she said I've got to go this is just too painful she got up and walked out then I went into makeup and was having you know touch-ups done before going um, on for the afternoon she came in and came up to talk to me and I said please just go away just leave me alone and then she came up again to say I am now finally going well she sounds like quite an annoying bitch <laughs> <laughs> I mean how yeah. many times has she got to be told you're in the state <laughs> She's making it tough for you. She just made I it used worse. to like her. Now, now I'm, I'm rapidly going off this woman. But when she eventually left, she said she got in the car and she put the car on and I'd just been in there and she had this car where on half of the side you can have cold air blowing and on the other side you can have hot air in the hot warm seat. And it must have smelled like a melon. But and there was it smelled no like melon a melon in there. there. You're not there anymore. But she oh. said she got in, turned the car on and my hot seat just came on and oh. she, she just was just hysterical. Oh. She phoned then and, and was just literally hysterical, just going, oh my God, it's like you're here next to me. It was honestly <laughs> like I died or something. <laughs> but what was so sad was that at the end of the day we were going out for a meal that night, just coming round to the bar. So you, so you were singing. Anyway. Yeah. 
And when we saw each other, we just had really swollen faces. <laughs> and then we all went out for a party then. <laughs> I see this since as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you, I'm quite exhausted now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm emotionally drained. Really? You've, you've sucked me dry of emotion. Am I the only woman who sat on the sofa who sucked you dry? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> now I'm going to cry. <laughs>